I'm going to go ahead and do, do that now. All right, so moving forward, this meeting is being recorded. Um, so just so everyone knows, there's the chat right there. Um, you're welcome. I'm going to keep my chat on the side here in case anybody wants to text anything in um, in the chat. So uh, I'm just going to recap really quickly. This will be the last time I talk about it. Week one and week two assignments. Everything in here, you need to click on these and submit these assignments, review what needs to be turned in. These are all things that you've already done in the past, in the first couple of weeks of school. I just need you to resubmit it, but here on Canvas so I can grade it and keep your grades sort of all together um, inside, of, inside of Canvas. All these assignments are due by midnight tonight, and you have up and until next Tuesday to turn them in late. Um, so that's that information. So. Um, the next thing I wanted to discuss here is I added a document, I, sorry, I added an assignment here. There's no due date for it. It's going to be up here all semester. It's for those of you who visited the Michael Maltzen Cal Poly Pomona lecture. If you visited that lecture and took a photograph, which is what I asked for, um, you can submit here um, your proof of that. Um, it can either be an image or a PDF, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's worth uh, a few points here, five points, not a lot, maybe about half of an, an exercise. Um, but, you know, if you miss an exercise, at least you're getting half, half credit on it still if you did this. Um, again, it, the due date on this is all the way till the end of the semester. So as long as you get this in before the end of the semester, it will reflect. So this is pretty straightforward. This link just takes you to um, the site, uh, Cal Poly site where it was the information about that lecture. All I'm looking for is just photographic proof. Um, if you've already turned something into me to show proof of this through email, please just do it one more time, but do it through Canvas. Um, I'm trying to transfer everything into Canvas format, so that way I'm not trying to chase items in my email down the line, and it's all living here in Canvas. So for those of, I know somebody asked, can you please um, let me know how to submit the extra credit? Here is your chance to do that. You have all, um, all semester to get that taken care of. So um, next thing I wanted to talk about is, and I'm gonna go into student view. I think that's probably better because it's what you all see. Um, one thing I do wanna talk about is um, this announcement here that I had posted. Um, I didn't update to this announcement. For some reason, this Zoom link here wasn't working. I guess I didn't make it a, a, a reoccurring meeting. However, for this meeting that we're talking right now, I scheduled it to be reoccurring uh, twice a week. And so you should be able to, when in doubt, come to this link and click it to join the session. Um, I think I spoke with uh, Carlos about this. He said the other way to get into the meeting is just to click the Comfort Zoom button and it takes you there. Um, unfortunately, I can't do it because this is just like a preview view. Um, but I was told that took me way in the wrong direction here. One second, everyone. Yeah, but what I was told is you can either click the comfort zoom button and it should take you to the meeting. I think nobody had an issue with that. So um, two ways to get to these meetings um, every week. So with that said, I'm going to now just quickly move on from what we've discussed so far from the extra credit. And I'm going to talk about the added assignments to week, uh, week six. So on Tuesday, I discussed the arrow and symbols exercise. Um, I went over that. Again, that's due on Tuesday. Um, so expect to get that submitted by midnight on Tuesday. Um, the other item that I discussed was the plans and elevations assignment for project two. That is also due on Tuesday. Um, and so that uh, both these assignments were pretty much uh, recaps of week three. Um, but maybe some of you didn't get a chance to complete these assignments in the past, and so now's your opportunity to do so. Um, based off these two assignments here, did anybody have any questions about submitting or getting the work completed? And if nobody had any questions, um, did everybody feel that the Project 2, the way that this is formatted, is acceptable enough to move forward in this exact same format? Is there anybody who kind of disagrees with that or... Um, wants to do anything, wants me to format things differently. I think it's good that we do everything in a separate file. So like the individual exercises would be put in a different file. So instead of saying like submit everything in week two or week three, we do everything, you know, line practice, site plan, X, Y, and Z. 
instead of like submit one whole thing because i feel like if we submit week three as one big file people will get confused and not add everything whereas if we have the individual pieces then i think people will so you think here on um the modules that this isn't clear enough as far as being week week one week six day one week six day two and then oh no the that's that's before. fine I, I it's a it's a really good um setup i was just saying that in the future i think it would probably would be a bad idea if we did like submit everything from week three into one file yeah yeah so i'm trying to avoid that because it'll just be like one big file it'll be complicated it'll also be hard for me to grade um so i'm trying to break things down in a way where there's always an exercise for each day of the week and that's always inside of the week whatever day whatever um title and then anything that's project-based is in, just going to be in its own category below it and um a lot of these a lot of the times the project two will extend for weeks so expect um continuation of drawings right so there might be this plans and elevations right assignment in week six you might find in week seven that i have a plans and elevations update right where you're going to continue adding to those plans and elevations and adding more detail and resubmitting essentially the same thing again. However, it's just going to have more information. So um, the one thing that's going to continue moving through the weeks is the projects, right? But as far as assignments go and exercises, those are just going to be on the, on the day. And I'm going to try and just keep it to about one assignment per day, kind of thing like this, and just make that worth the day's worth assignment. And then I'll be adding to the project um, each, each class session as we start to progress through that project. So um, yeah, if there, is, is there any other comments or questions regarding the way I'm formatting things um, for the course? Sounds like you want to say something, Paul, but maybe it's just a microphone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Okay, just checking. Alrighty, so with that said, I'm glad that everybody likes this format and that nobody's contesting, obviously, the way this is laid out. I think that this is very useful. Um, I'll let you know for this week's um, assignment, I did not do a discussion video um, like I did for this one, uh, but I feel it's straightforward enough to where it didn't require a discussion video. Um, I think that these videos are very helpful as well as far as being able to learn how to draw things. Uh, sorry for the angle on this first video here. I had my drawing board propped up. And so it created sort of a weird illusion, whereas I've now flattened my drawing board. And so these came out looking a little bit better. They're not so skewed and they're a little bit easier to see. Um, so let's actually jump into the, the week six, day two assignment. And you don't need to, to follow along as far as doing this in Canvas. I can just show you here, right? And you can check it out later. Um, so this is the conceptual site plan exercise assignment. Um, this is just the exercise portion for today. What I'd like for you to do is, and everybody should have done this already, so let me just open these up. If you didn't get a chance to do this, now's your time to get this done. Essentially what I'm asking for you to do is download and print and redraw the conceptual site plan printout on trace paper. Scan completed exercise to PDF format and then submit by the due date. So this is that printout. Um, I believe this is an eight and a half by 11. It's fine, you can print it on an eight and a half by 11. All I'm asking for you to do here is print out this, this page, throw a piece of trace paper on top of it. It can be the 14 by 17 tracing pad. And I want you to just trace all the information that's on this verbatim. Um, it's good practice. As you can see, it, it defines zones, it shows the building location, it has circulation paths, it has barriers, right? Um, and it has the property line. So it has a lot of useful information for what I'm looking for for your project too. Um, so I think it's a good practice for that. Um, I've also provided a, a lecture handout here for conceptual drawings. This is what we, I had discussed in class and it provides all the information that you're looking for to really help create a good conceptual site plan for your project too. It's got the arrow types and um, you know, different conceptual site plans for you to reference. Um, again, the format down here for it is 14 by 17 on a tracing pad. And you can use pencils or pen, and please use line weights, line types, graphic arrows, and symbols, right? So that's making sure that you just match everything that's on here verbatim, right? If the line is dashed and it's thick, show that. If this is a thinner squiggly line, show that, right? 
make sure that you have line weights. This, this profile line of this building is a really heavy line weight, so make sure that it shows that way. I should literally be seeing almost a copy of this um, as the assignment. And so the last thing on here is just a discussion quickly about uh, conceptual site plans and just understanding what they are. Uh, essentially a conceptual drawing or a site plan is just a loose and free and character drawing. There's no conventional symbols for it, right? It's about you coming up with your own sort of graphic um, analysis for this. Um, it's an abstract drawing. It's not meant to convey exact shapes, textures, and forms. It's meant to just um, express functions, right? Spaces and relationships. Um, so that's why you can see that this is sort of just blobs and symbols and, and uh, arrows, right? Um, so it's really just uh, abstracting what your site plan could be. So please print out that, um, this handout here, trace it and submit it by next Tuesday and you'll be in good shape. That's the added assignment for week six. Um, and we did cover that a bit in week three. And so there it is right there. The other assignment um, to discuss is actually part of project two. And it is the object collision conceptual site plan. So now that you, I would start with the exercise first. And then after you've completed the exercise, you can jump into the actual project two um, assignment. It is very similar. Um, so I'm gonna click into that right now. This is also due on, the, on Tuesday. So that means you have a lot of items that are gonna be due Tuesday. Um, I'm actually going to set the deadline for this. I'm gonna change it. Right now it says Tuesday by midnight. I'm gonna change this uh, shortly and I'm gonna actually set it to before class. So that way I can get everybody's version of this submitted. And if you don't have the availability to share your screen on Tuesday, I will share it for you. Um, what I'm expecting from this is for you to produce your own proposed conceptual site plan for project two. This is gonna be your own design. So you're no longer copying what I'm doing, you're creating your own. Um, and you're gonna present it to us via ConferZoom here. I'll share it on the screen or you can share it on your own screen. We can all view it. You can walk us through your conceptual design ideas for your site plan and we can provide feedback for you and you can make changes moving forward on that if you'd like. Um, but what I have here, I just run through everything that's on this um, assignment and then I can open it up for some questions. So uh, please review the videos and handouts below and complete the conceptual site plan assignment, scan to PDF and submit by the due date. So the first uh, document that's in here is the handout. You don't need to print this out. You can just view it via your t uh, computer screen. Um, what I'm talking about here, the first thing that I want you to do is take your site plan and I want you to locate your roof plan onto your site plan. So it must be within the setbacks. And that's something I actually wanna discuss with everyone as a class in a moment here. So this is what I'm looking for. Obviously your site plan has a lot more information on it. This is just only the property line. I should expect yours to be your entire site plan that you did um, uh, back in week two. And um, it should just have your building location on it. And you should be showing your roof plan, right? Not your floor plan, but your roof plan version of it. Um, right here is an example of what I'm looking for. You should have your building placement on your site plan. And so here's an example of what I'm looking for to be completed and submitted. Um, I wanted to run through this with everyone. Um, I am a little fuzzy on what I said the setbacks were in class. I kind of did it impromptu in class that day. Um, is there anybody who has what those setbacks were? Um, I have since made some changes to that. So if you have already drawn in your setback, line into your site plan um, and you did it in pen, you don't need to change it. I don't want you to have to redraw your entire site plan. However, if you have not put your setback in or if it's in pencil, please revise it to meet these dimensions. So the front yard setback is 15 feet now. I think in class um, back uh, in week three, I said that this was 20 feet. I think I said it was 20 feet. However, no, you said uh, 10. I said 10 feet. Okay, so this, this distance was 10 feet. Okay, and I know I said that the side yards were five feet. That's not changed at all. I know for a fact that that didn't change. Um, what did I say that the, the rear yard setback was? Did I say 15? 
Yeah, 15 back for, yeah. So I have them flipped here. I have it incorrect here. Alrighty, so I will actually update this document then. Um, so that way it reflects that. Um, so this can be this can be 10 feet and this can be 15 feet rather than what I have here. So I have it reversed. I knew I had it right, but I knew I had it wrong at the same time. So that's why I just wanted to confirm with everybody. Um, if anybody has anything other than what, uh, I think that was Eric said, um, please let me know, but I will go ahead and update this and reload it. So that way it has the correct dimensions there. Um, so what we'll be looking for is 10 feet in the front yard and 15 feet in the backyard and five feet on the side yards for that setback. Your building is not allowed to be placed outside of the setback, right? You can design your landscaping and everything else outside of the setback, but your actual building itself needs to be placed inside of that setback. So with that said, um, I'll take us to this video here. This video discusses placing your roof plan onto your site plan. Um, and I'll just run through it pretty quickly here. I won't uh, review the whole thing. I'm just gonna mute it. Um, but what I'd like for you to do is take your site plan And what I'm looking for here is for you to, let me jump forward, here we go. I do discuss a bit here in the beginning, the first three minutes of this is really just discussing um, the context of the site. So knowing that you have a creek in the north and a forest area on the east, the street is on the south and on the west hand side you have a neighbor. I just go through all that information again. So here I'm discussing and I have a very basic um, site plan here. Here I'm just discussing how do you um, set up your roof plan on this drawing. And so what I would expect everyone to do is actually underlay your, your roof plan assignment, right, that you were, I assigned on Tuesday. You should be able to underlay it on your site plan and locate where you're placing your building, right? Once you've located where your building is being placed, I'd like for you to um, go ahead and trace it onto your site plan. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm tracing that document onto the site plan. And once you pull the roof plan away, um, you should be left with just um, the finalized version of the roof plan. And now it exists on the site plan, right? So that's why I'm having us do all this stuff in trace paper. So that way you can really kind of collaborate your drawings together. And this is what I'm looking for, right? So your site plan should now have the proposed location of your roof plan on the site. Um, so please review that video in detail just to really understand what I'm going, what I'm talking about there. I also do discuss sort of the context of the site and items that you need to be aware of uh, moving forward. So after that, I have a second video here. This video now discusses um, the conceptual site plan. And what I've done here is I've actually overlaid a piece of trace paper on top of the site plan. So there's the site plan. And I've put a new piece of trace paper on top of that. And after I've done that, I've inked in the setbacks and property lines. And then from here, I start by following the steps that I showed above. Um, and I'll make sure I cover that one more time as far as what those steps are. Um, but what you want to do here is get your building drawn in and on your conceptual site plan, I'm looking for the floor plan version of your building design, not the roof plan. So that means this time around, you're going to have dashed lines and also only solid lines of the items that are touching on the touching down on the ground, right? And so I'll fast forward just a little bit here. And I'll actually set the speed on this faster so that way it kind of runs through it. Um, so now I'm starting to lay out the general zones of what I'm interested in for the project here. Um, and you can start by using pencil for this, right? That's the best method to start things off. And then once you've kind of defined what those things are, you can start to ink it in, right? And so I'm going to move through this here. And now I'm starting to ink this stuff in, right? And so as a final result, there is another step in here. I'd like for you to start to add barriers. After you get your zones established, you can start to create privacy barriers, which is what I'm highlighting in there. And once you have your zones uh, that are creating barriers for privacy, 
um, you can start to add in your arrows um, to connect the program spaces together, right? And I'm just gonna fast forward it there. Now you see I've incorporated some arrows onto this drawing. And at the end there, you should just have a final piece that is your conceptual site plan. So my recommendation with this is once you've developed your site plan or your conceptual site plan to this level, and you've done it pretty quick just to kind of get, get it to this point, I would recommend throwing another piece of trace paper on top of this and then doing it one more time and making it um, a little bit nicer. Uh, for instance, I've got sort of my zones going outside of my property line here. I've got this front yard now sort of encroaching in the barrier, right? And so it's, it's all there, but it's not the cleanest it could be, right? So you could throw another piece of trace paper on top of this and redraw it one more time if you'd like um, to really clean it up and make it look nice. Um, so I just did all this freehand, by the way. There's no really need for tools. Um, so that's, that's, that's getting the site plan going. So please follow this assignment here, or sorry, this handout here for the steps. Step one was to locate your roof plan onto your site plan. Step two is locate your floor plan onto a new piece of trace paper onto your conceptual site plan. Develop where your program spaces are and your building is. After that, you can add in your barriers and where those are gonna occur. And then you should be able to sort of redraw it one last time and kind of refine sort of the symbols and graphics and arrows that you're using um, as a finalized sort of conceptual site plan to submit. I'm really only looking for two items in the submission. One of the items is your site plan with the roof plan on it, which is shown here. And then the second item that I'm looking for is a conceptual site plan that looks like this. This is an example of what I'm looking for. So it's gonna be on a 14 by 17 piece of trace paper at the same size as your site plan. So it should be really easy to just throw a piece of trace paper on top of it and copy the information. You can see that this is the roof plan with the site plan here, and this is the floor plan with the conceptual diagram. Um, so that's what I'm looking for as far as being uh, submitted. It's gonna be two documents. Um, and this one runs through the site plan and this one runs through the conceptual drawing. Um, so some final things on here, as far as format goes, just read through this. It's overlaying your site plan on your roof plan and determining your building location. You draw your roof plan on your site plan. Use pencils only for the site plan revisions and use a lightweight pencil. No line weights are required yet. After that, you can overlay a new piece of 14 by 17 trace paper to develop and begin your conceptual site plan. Make sure you establish your property line and setbacks on your conceptual site plan. Then incorporate your floor plan, same position um, as your site plan. And then you can finalize with symbols, arrows, and complete the proposed design. For the conceptual site plan, I'm looking for pen only, and please use line weights and line types to develop your drawing. For discussion, um, because it's a lot of the same information, I just taking you back to the conceptual site plan exercise and the arrow and symbol exercise, those assignments have um, a discussion in there that really covers a lot of the information on here. So this is what I'm looking for. Again, on Tuesday, I'm going to actually update this to be due before class. So be prepared to submit this document prior to everything else that is due on the 7th. Um, all these assignments here, one, two, three, and four are all due on Tuesday. This one here is gonna be due before class. Everything else is gonna be due by midnight. So that'll give you a little bit of extra time after class to wrap up these drawings. Keep in mind the most important thing to have prior to class on Tuesday is that conceptual site plan submitted. So that way we can review it together as a class. And just be aware, prepare yourself to discuss your conceptual site plan proposed design as I will be sharing those on the screen and you'll be required to kind of provide a narrative or run through of your design and what you're interested in proposing for your project. So, um, yes. Uh, is the conceptual site plan exercise different? That's the one that we traced, right? The smaller yes. one? Yes, this one is the smaller one that you're tracing. This one is your own design for project two. Gotcha, thank you. Yep.
So um, that's pretty much everything that's been added new to Canvas. I'm curious if there's any questions about any of that so far moving forward. Um, uh, if it's clear and it makes sense to everybody, then that's totally fine. Um, but if anybody has questions about what um, is to be done or do, please let me know right now so I can help answer those questions. And also, if you had any issues submitting documents or trying to figure out how to scan stuff, um, you can ask me now. That's now's a great time um, so I can try and help troubleshoot any of that. I have a question. Really quick. Yes. Yes. So, um, for one of the assignments, I believe it was the object collision one, one of the site plans, I turned it in, but then I accidentally also turned in another assignment. Is that was okay? it like, was it like one combined PDF? Is that what happened? Or what did you? They're like two separate files, like submitted it for that assignment only. Okay. As long as, um, the actual assignment is submitted in there, it should be fine. I'll just assume that the second file is just something that was an accident and I'll probably just remove it. So thank you for letting me know. Um, it shouldn't be an issue. I'm pretty sure both assignments get uploaded when you submit them like that. Um, if not, uh, I won't dock you down for it. I'll just make sure that it gets resolved. So once I actually check it, I'll, I'll verify. And then if there's an issue, I'll get back to you on it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So any other questions? I have a quick question. What yes. was the app that you mentioned um, to, I guess, take a picture of it and turn it into a PDF? Oh. You mentioned a specific app. Yeah, do you have an iPhone or do you have an Android phone? iPhone. iPhone, so with the iPhone, there's an already built-in app. It's called Notes. Okay. Um, you can use that built-in app. I can show you right now. There's actually, um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you can see this. Um, there is actually a video on the homepage of the Canvas. If you scroll down, it's this video here, how to scan documents using your phone. And it's about a three minute video and it covers the notes app and how to scan items. So just watch this video, Priscilla, and you'll be able to see how do you scan a document. Um, and okay, since yeah, you have an iPhone, you can use notes. Okay, yeah, I know how to use it from there. I just didn't know if you wanted us to use a specific type because I remember you mentioned it, it scales it differently or? Uh, yeah, some some sca um, scanning apps aren't that good, um, but that one should be fine. Um, it should pick up the size of the document and, and at least be proportionate to the size of the document it's supposed to be. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of leniency as far as um, scaling of those documents. Um, moving forward, we're going to start adding graphic scales to all of our drawings. And so if there's a graphic scale on your drawing, I should be able to scale it um correctly off of that right unless you draw the graphic scale wrong so um it shouldn't be an issue um when you scan it with the notes app on your iphone um it should just it should work just fine so um uh, once i start seeing some of the submissions and reviewing them if there's issues with it if i have problems with any of it i'll let you all know and then um, we can work to try to fix it and correct it um so I was going to ask too um, if uh, probably in the future we'll find out which app is better for scanning, right? Um, if you have an iPhone, I would just use the Notes app. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I use, and it, it works fine. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so, and it's built into the phone, so you're not going to get weird watermarks or ads when you're trying to use the app. You know, it's all it's like it's free and included with the phone. Um, so you're not going to get all that secondhand stuff that comes with um, third-party apps. So that's you good. Can also because airdrop that, it too. Like yeah, and, it, and then you can. Yeah, exactly. Mac. If you have a Mac, you can airdrop the file directly to your computer, and you don't even need to email it to yourself. Um, but if you don't have a Mac and you're working on a PC, you will need to just email yourself the file. But it's really not a big deal because um, it's not quite as fast, but it still works really well, which is what I do because I don't have a Mac. So. Um, yeah, it should be a pretty easy process using the notes app on your iPhone. So any other questions? No. Okay. I saw some people submitted. I don't know who fully has submitted everything, but uh, please make sure you get all of week one and week two assignments submitted to Canvas by midnight tonight. Otherwise it'll be uh, marked as late. Lawrence, were you going to say something? Not sure. Yeah, I have yes. a question regarding the 
Okay, regarding the floor plan, uh, can we, um, are we supposed to use exactly the same or can we either to like add on or delete a portion of it? Can you, can you repeat your question one more time? I'm sorry. Can, on the site, on the roof plan, can we add on or delete a portion from it? Or are we supposed to use exactly the same? Yeah, so that's a great question. I would like for you to keep the design exactly as what's shown on the assignment sheet there. Please don't add or remove any objects to the design at this point. Um, typically in this class, it's not technically a design class. It's more um, of like an introductory drawing course. So I'm, I was told by like Hero and Iggy and all them that I'm not supposed to give you design assignments. However, some of these assignments have a little bit of design in them, but they're not design heavy. And the reason for that is because you should be taking the studio course and that's where you should be doing all your design work, right? That's the bulk of where you're going to produce projects and uh, be including into your portfolio. So um, please don't change anything on it. It's intended to be that way on purpose. So everybody's model or design should look exactly the same. Um, down the line, if we can make it to it, which I'm really banking that we will for the next project or the final project, you'll be able to create your own design rather than have to follow a format of what I provide. So um, hopefully we can get that, get into that um, towards the end of the semester. Alrighty, any other questions? No? Okay, everybody is able to get a T-square. Hopefully you got a T-square and you have some kind of a drawing board that you can use or a table that you can use. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's not much else for today. I just wanted to keep it quick and just meet face to face with everyone and um, just kind of run through what's been added to the canvas. Um, I think it's really straightforward. Again, um, today's videos that I've added, one is 15 minutes and the other one's uh, like 10 minutes. So it's not more than 25 minutes of video tutorialing. It shouldn't take you much longer to do the work itself. So um, it should be pretty straightforward and easy for everyone to accomplish. Uh, moving into next week, besides reviewing everyone's conceptual site plans, we'll start going into um, new exercises. Uh, we'll probably start to jump into landscaping um, and so we'll start drawing trees and bushes and plants and things like that. And I'll discuss how to, how to draw that kind of stuff. Um, and we'll continue with project two. Um, we need to, after getting our conceptual site plans locked in, uh, we can start adding more detail to our actual site plans and we can start adding more detail to our elevation drawings. Right now it's just the building design by itself and there's no line weights, there's nothing really, right? And so, what we're gonna do is actually move forward adding more detail to those drawings. Um, and I'll be covering that in the following weeks. So um, yeah, with that said, that's pretty much everything. I really don't have much else to discuss. So um, I'm just gonna allow everyone to, if you don't have any other questions, you can go ahead and have a good night already. And uh, we'll pick things back up on Tuesday. Be prepared on Tuesday to have that conceptual site plan ready to go and ready to discuss your proposed design. Um, so if, with that said, if uh, you don't have any questions, you are free to um, head out of this session and I will see you again on Tuesday. Okay. So I had a comment about Canvas. Yes. Um, I don't know if they've changed it or not, but Canvas will only really turn in the last submitted document. Okay. So if like, I can't remember who was saying it, but um, yeah, they said they submitted the wrong one. I, I think yeah. they said they submitted the right one and then submitted the wrong one. If she just submits the right one again, it'll take it. And I see. So just continue it, to uh, over overwrite it. Yes. So like if you change something, you would be able to put that changed one in. Okay. I know who the person is who uh, mentioned that. So I will go ahead and check to see sort of what ended up happening there. Um, and, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that that documents in there. Thank you for letting me know, Jake. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no I'm, problem. I'm pretty new to this, so <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Was... I don't know the mechanics of, uh, canvas that well so yeah okay
Thank you. <clears throat> I had a question. Um, yes, sir. When I when we turn in Word, do you want us to turn it like like into like a group it together like week one? Because I'm just sending it through the like assignments thing, the turn in. Yes. So what you're going to do is you're going to submit each assignment separately. So don't give me, for instance, in week one, don't turn in a PDF that has both the scale and the site plan exercise in it. Mm -hmm. Only turn in the site plan exercise information into that link and only turn in the um, oh. scale exercise in that link. So break, break things up. Uh, I think I've been doing that. Yeah. So just double check and make sure that that's what you're doing. You should be submitting all the assignments uh, individually rather than one big one. Otherwise, if you turn everything as one big one, it could get confusing. And for me as well, it'll be hard to track and grade. So please make sure that you submit everything individually. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're talking about only like the weekly ones, right? Um, I'm talking about pretty much any assignment that you see on here in the modules. You're only gonna submit the information that's um, uh, appropriate for that uh, assignment or project. Um, project assignment or exercise right okay so, yeah because um, yeah, yeah. those some of those assignments are already like grouped together those are fine to group for um so if it's all documents that are part of the same assignment then yes that's fine but i wouldn't want you to turn in in the scale exercise assignment um other things from week one right it should just be that scale exercise those two pages yeah and then also i had a question about the uh project two for the plans and elevation yes um, so for that one, are we adding the setbacks and the roof plan to the original trace that we did in like week two? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to go ahead and throw that information. These documents are going to be updated every week, right? So expect to add more and more detail slowly throughout the weeks to these drawings. Um, you don't need to redo all, everything over again, right? Just start adding layers of information to that drawing. And eventually, I do this on purpose because I don't expect anybody to be able to just produce a site plan in one go, right? I expect you to do a certain level of detail. And then the next assignment might be um, revise that level of detail, right, further and then resubmit it again, right? And it may look exactly the same, but there might be minor changes, like maybe you added line weights to it, right, or something like that. Or maybe you added trees to the drawing now, right? And I'm going to ask you to return it in one more time because you're adding layers of information to these drawings. So, okay. and with, with that original site plan, uh, like obviously we use pen or um, um, you used pen for your, the, just a conceptual site plan. Yes. But uh, for our original uh, site plan, we don't use pen, right? We just use the pencil. At this point, just use pencil because um, uh, we need to kind of define things a little bit, right? You haven't developed the entire site plan yet. Um, so I wouldn't want you to start using pen and then you decide you have to make a change and then have to white everything out. Right. Okay. So if you just leave everything in pencil for now, you can erase it. And if you leave everything without line weights and just leave everything really thin line weights, then you can go over the top of all of it down the line in pen and add line weights. Right. And you can kind of just redraw the drawing one more time. And then you, then when it's done, you can add, you know, at the final step, you can add it and turn it into pencil pen versus pencil. Okay, so you're saying, so basically what you're saying is that our original site plan from week two is gonna stick with us throughout the rest of the semester? For, until this assignment's done. Oh, to the assignment, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yep. Uh, kind of building off of that last one. So for every time we do something new, should it be a brand new sheet of paper that goes onto it? No, uh, so that's a great question. Um, I've thought about that in the past, like maybe you just layer your pieces of information, right? And you stack all your pieces of trace paper. Um, you could do that. However, at the same time, um, after a while, aligning things starts to get a little bit sloppy. And then also when you go to scan all those sheets as, as one, the one on the bottom is going to be a lot fainter or lighter than the one on top. So um, I would recommend putting it all into one drawing. Um, but if you want to work things out, before you finalize it, I always recommend throwing a piece of trace paper. Get your roll of trace paper, right? You can just rip a piece off, put yeah. it on top of it and say, I want trees here, here, and here. That looks perfect. Underlay it and then draw it for real yeah. on, on the that. sheet, right? So use as much trace paper as you need. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked you to buy the roll of trace paper. So that yeah. way you can do practice 
stuff and figure things out. And then once it's determined and it's good, just underlay it on your site plan and then you can draw it technically after. So like have one final one, but then do yes. a lot of sketching on a bunch of different ones. Yep. That's the best okay. way to work. It's the best way to work. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hey, Jeff. Yes. So the lighting in my room and throughout the entirety of my house is really bad. Um, so when I scan documents, um, some line work doesn't, it's not, it, you can read it and see it, but it looks really fuzzy. So is that going to be an issue? Should I just? Um, ideally, it's in the best quality that you can possibly get. I get it though. Yeah. Um, do you have like a, like a desk lamp or anything that you can put on your document and like kind of point source light it up? Not, not currently. A lot of things were okay. left behind in, the, in my old studio room. Okay. So this is what I suggest moving forward. Do the best you can for this um, submittal. Uh, but for next week, what I would recommend doing is going out in the daylight uh, <laughs> and scanning this stuff during the day in the actual daylight. If you do, do it outside, but in the shade, mm -hmm. it, should, it should still come out really clear. Um, okay. it could, just because it's bright, you know? Yeah. Um, if you do it in direct sunlight, it might wash it out might be too bright okay. so yeah again just it. find like a sh yeah find like a shady spot um just use your drawing board or, or something to put your drawing on top of and then just take a quick photo of it and scan it um but i understand for the first submittal of things because since it's due today um if it's a little bit grainy because you don't have good lighting right now that's fine um but moving forward try to make sure that the scans are as good as possible okay thank okay. you for the tip mm -hmm. Jeff? Yes. Um, I submitted the superimposition. Um, like I scanned both of the, the one that you gave us to work with and then the one that we like create on our own. Yeah. Like the little blue blocks. Um, I turned it in as like two separate PDFs because when I scanned on the iPhone notes app, I didn't click to like continue making scans. So it so was like it, separate. two separate documents. Okay. Yeah. I can combine them if you want, but I was just wondering, yeah, if you want me to like combine it, like resubmit it because. Um, let me see on my end. I mean, ideally it's one document and not two. Yeah. Um, so that way um, it's just simpler on my end. Mm -hmm. um, you said you submitted it already? Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, it gives would... me an option I think to add another file so I don't know about someone else was saying something about like it overwrites the other one or something. Yeah, somebody had mentioned that. Um, I'm not familiar enough with it to know how that works. Um, so I am going to um, try and figure that out. Right here, let me see. I'm, I can download submissions. Give me one second uh, for the project one. And let me see if um, both of your files showed up or not. Okay. Uh, hello, Jeff. Yes. Okay, so um, I just know I we can't like scan on the phone, so I will give you other like uh, I still have like some like the light is not good, but I will try my best to give you like which I can do and like I can scan on the phone and I will submit like I do tonight. But yeah. like uh, you know, you know my situation, so yeah, uh, like uh, the uh. Like another thing, if I don't have the paper, like the drawing paper, I'll give you like, uh, um, like you know, you know. I just tell you first and um, do it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just uh, keep in touch with me. Send me an email and let me know yeah. what you're what you're submitting and how you're submitting it. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I'll work with you to make sure that it's it's uh, it's good. 
Okay. So it's a uh, it's through the Adobe scan or like uh, it's only the notes. Um, either way, whatever is going to get you to be able to scan documents, whatever works easier for you, um, you can use either one. Just as long as you can scan documents. So it's all the PDF, right? Yeah, PDF, please. Okay. All right. That's all set. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Catherine. I have. It actually turned uh, combined it into one document. Beautiful. Really, that's cool. Let's see here. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, I just downloaded the assignments here. And I don't know if this is what you had submitted initially. Um, but it shows it as both of them together. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, okay, that's cool. So it worked out to your advantage. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, and then I need to check to see the other person. Let me try to... mine came out. Yeah, Eric, so yours is right here. It looks done, right? Um, oh, it up. Yeah, so there's one and there's two. Yes, sir. Is that all that was supposed to be in that file? Yeah, it was just those two, two, um, two drawings. Okay. So, yeah, that's good. Ideally, in the future, um, and I can, I do have the ability, obviously, to rotate this stuff, but you see how it came in upside down? Yeah. Ideally, when you scan these things, make sure that they're the correct format before you uh, submit them, so that way I, I don't have to uh, go in here and, and spend the extra time to rotate them like I just did right now. Uh, sure uh, Jeff, for those uh, conceptual site plans, on one of them we use uh, the roof plan and then on the other the floor plan, right? Correct. Just, yeah. conceptual, right. conceptual site plan is the floor plan. The uh, roof plan goes on your site plan. All right. And just follow the videos. I make sure to cover that explicitly on the videos. I, I state what what plan drawing goes on what site plan. Okay, all right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Interesting thing is, is um, I actually had somebody submit two documents and they came out separately. So um, I don't know what happened on your end, Catherine. <laughs> actually, I think that I submitted it separately I don't know because I remember I submitted one of the assignments as two PDFs. Maybe it was not it was, the, um, it might not be the uh, superimposition project. Maybe yeah, it's maybe a different it's project. Another, I'm not sure. Um, but if that's the case, it does come in here as two separate files. So um, it doesn't overwrite the other one. Um, so, like for instance, uh, Lawrence, he had submitted two separate files there. And so mm -hmm. they're both there. Um, I think the only way it would, uh, not um, allow you or overwrite or not allow you to submit more than one file is if I do that in the settings of the assignment. However, I have it open, free and open to just submit it as is. So I'm not putting any restrictions on the submissions mm -hmm. for it. So that's probably why there's, there's probably not gonna be any issue, so. Yeah. I think I combined it actually and I forgot that I combined it or something. Okay, <laughs> either way, if you don't combine it, um, it shows up as two drawings, so. Um, ideally, though, combine everything just so that it's one yeah. file and I'm not chasing two files down. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I, you probably go over this in the video, but for your, our uh, site plan, the conceptual site plan, yeah. uh, back in class, you said we should know either the highest point or the lowest point of the elevation? Yeah. Um, I don't remember which one that was, though. So. Yeah, so let me, I'm gonna go ahead, I can run through that. That's a great question. Um, so I'm gonna go to that assignment, conceptual site plan, and I'm gonna run through, I'll actually show it here. No, here. So, uh, based off of where you place your building, and maybe your conceptual site plan doesn't show the topography lines, right? Mm. But your site plan will, right? Yes. And so the site plan does, and it actually has your building placement as well. And so what I'm interested in, in understanding here and knowing 
is that whatever's at the lowest point, that's gonna be the elevation, excuse me, that your entire building is at. So even though this portion of the building here and that portion of the building there are touching the ground, the elevation that the bottom of that building is where the floor is, is gonna be based off the lowest point, not the highest point. Because if you place your building, let's say how this one is, the building is here, right? And so it's between 88 and 87. Mm -hmm. If you place the, that floor at 80, let's say 88, right? This part of the building would actually be floating in the air, right? It'd be off of the grade because the grade's sloping down and the building's mm -hmm. flat, right? So it starts to drop off like that. And so even more so, the fin piece is at almost 86. So it's about two feet lower here than it is there, right? The, it slopes down two feet lower. And so what I'm looking for is that you place your building at the lowest possible elevation, which in this example here would probably be at like 86. Okay. So that means that this whole portion of the building at this face here, the front face of it, because it's close to 88, it's actually gonna be two feet, two feet underground. Um, so just uh, be aware of that uh, moving forward. Um, I think I may have something here that I can show you um, to help clarify things a bit. Let me open this up. So as part of your elevations, right, you can see how this portion is sort of lower and this portion is higher, right? Um, and so the building was set at this lower portion. So that means that this part of this building is actually underground a little bit, right? So there would be the rest of that there. Um, on this one as well, you can see the same thing. Um, the building is set at the lower level and then the upper level is sort of built into the ground. Um, it's intentional because if you set your building at the higher level, then this part would be floating in the air and you'd actually have to build up the grade around it to make it work, right? Um, so what I'm looking for is that you set your building at the lowest elevation and then we'll work around it, right? So just keep this in mind. In this example here, the entrance to this part of the building that touches the ground is actually two feet lower than the actual ground around it. So that means that if you have a car that pulls up and parks right here, you actually need some steps, right? Like four to five steps to get you down those two feet for you to actually enter into your front door, right? Assuming that your front door is at the bottom of that object, which is gonna be the case, right? So what that forces everyone to start thinking about is, oh, I actually need steps to walk down to get into this building. I can't just walk right into it because the site slopes, um, which will also mean that at some point you'll need some kind of wall, right? That kind of helps define the ground is lower here, there's the wall and then the ground is higher behind it, right? So you kind of have to, carve out a piece of the land um, in order to create that entrance. And I'll definitely discuss this. Um, at this level, we don't really know what it is until everybody cites their building, right, and places it on there. Once your building is actually placed on the site, then you can start to work and do your elevation drawings, um, which will start to define how deep this part of your building is underground or not, right? It might be at the grade and this part is underground, right? Or vice versa. So um, that's what we're looking for on that. We'll cover that more with the elevation drawings. And so that way, that's where you're gonna start to understand how the ground works and where the level of the ground is. And then you can jump back into your site plan here and then say, okay, well, since it's two feet underground, if I want an access point to this building, I need to carve out an area of steps that will lead me down to that, right? And you can mm -hmm. define where that area is in your conceptual site plan and then update it eventually and put it onto your actual site plan, right? So um, that's the whole reason why I brought that up. Um, I'm going to, on Tuesday, bring that up to everyone, every, every conceptual site plan I look at and um, site plan that I look at. I'm gonna tell you, okay, well, your building elevation is gonna set at this number, right? And you should take note of it and when you work to do your elevation drawings, um, you got to keep that in mind and we'll start to discuss that. So that'll be some of the stuff that we move forward in working out next week. Thank you. Yep.
answered those questions, good. Dwindling down to the final few. Yeah, and you said that um, for our our traces, you said we need to print them out before um, we submit them, or? Um, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Can you try and yeah, uh, um, restate it one more time? Yeah, so like how the ones I've had before, like obviously like I had the, the printers at school like to print them out like yeah. through instead of like trace paper um for these submitting for like um the future do i just take a picture of the the trace paper and then submit it like that yes that's what you'll be doing so for instance um and i will share my screen again here um so for instance this student example that you see here this is exactly verbatim what I'm looking for. Imagine that this is your 14 by 17 piece of trace paper, right? Of your, of your site plan that you're working on. So once you get your building on there and the setback on there, snap a photo of it and be prepared to submit it. Um, then what you should do is develop a conceptual drawing. Once you finish that on its own separate piece of 14 by 17 piece of trace paper, then you can take a photo of that, scan it, right? And then submit it. Right? Yeah, oh, wait, so, and, um, and for that one, the one you have on your screen right now, this one yeah. does this one this one just needs what it has on like the paper right there right like it doesn't need all that other stuff where it says like it has the trees and like the other building um, um i don't see a uh any trees on this drawing like you know what i mean from like the other the site plan the actual site yeah plan? oh so like all this information yes no it doesn't need any of that from information it should be abstract like okay so is. yeah we're just tracing the um, the property line and then adding yep. okay Th this drawing should only have the property line and the setback and the the building floor plan everything else on it is part of the conceptual drawing right so there shouldn't and be this... any any trees or any um topography lines or any of this other stuff that's on here okay. you don't even necessarily need the neighbor in there as well you can just kind of you don't have to show the neighbor or any of that kind of stuff so Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Yeah. That's this right here is a, um, an A plus example of what I'm looking for. Right. Yes. If you have a 14 by 17 piece of trace paper that has this level of information and also has the setback on it and you put on here conceptual diagram, right. And you add this information down here as well. Um, you know, that's perfect. Right. I am going to cover this information down here in the bottom in upcoming weeks. So if you don't include it now, that's totally fine. Um, but really the meat and potatoes of what I'm looking for is this drawing right here. Right? Okay. So th this drawing is, has everything it needs except for the setback. Okay, so do, you don't even want the setback in this one or? This one needs the setback. It's the only thing missing. Oh, okay. Yeah. It should look more like the video. See how this video here has the setback in it? Let me just kind of, it has the property line in the setback. Yes. Yep. And so all you're gonna do next is just add your floor plan in and then develop your building design around it. Or not your building design, sorry, your, your site, your conceptual site plan around it. Okay. okay. If you watch the video, um, right at the end of this video, this is pretty much a result of what I proposed as my building design, right? So once you've wrapped this level of information up, you should be able to scan this with your phone and then you can submit that. Okay. Yeah. It sounds good. Also, I have, uh, I, I have an iPhone, but I was using like this, the app that came with like my printer and like, I just scanned it through that. That's fine. As long as it scans it and provides you with a PDF document, it does not matter. Whatever works easier for you. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Of course. Can you go back to that um, example site plan that you were just showing? This one right here. Yes. Um, this this yeah. docu this document or this. So document? the one below, the one that you just had below. Uh, yeah. Not that one. That one. So yes. 
kind of, I guess this kind of also plays off the the slope of the um, the land. But uh, with that hardscape that's underneath the building, I don't know the height of the building off the top of my head, but that's usable area, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, so um, that's actually a great question. So um, the only thing you need to be concerned about is um, obviously how deep the building is going to be in the ground versus mm -hmm. how much usable space underneath it that you can actually use. However, the object is designed in, in a way where there's a little bit of uh, flexibility in that. And I'm mm -hmm. just taking you to the building design right now. Um, if I just go to one of these elevations, um, this right here is six feet. So that's, uh, it's not, it doesn't give you that much room, right? Here it's mm -hmm. nine feet, nine feet. So there's only one object to really be worried about as far as elevation height, right? Which would be underneath this object. However, this, this object right here, this big one that's in the air is nine feet above the ground. The other one mm -hmm. is uh, six feet above the ground is what this looks like uh, based off of these drawings. Yeah, six feet. So what I would do is that's the only item that you really got to be careful about as far as hitting your head on when you walk mm -hmm. underneath it. So if I go back to the conceptual um, site plan here, and we look at this example, this is the object that it has a six foot height off the finished floor, right? This object here is nine feet above. So this one, you're, you're in good shape. Even if you drop down two feet, you're still seven feet, right? So you still have enough head clearance. Um, this is the object that you gotta be careful about because just like you mentioned, this hardscape right here has the potential of you hitting your head on it right yeah. if you're if you're not careful so something to consider is that one you can change the the grade and you can actually create walls let's say like uh uh re retaining walls or garden walls um that will allow you to change the slope or change the grade height and it kind of retains back whatever you, you're not interested in you can start to carve away this area a bit and that will actually allow you to build underneath it let's say if it goes below the six feet, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would just be careful, right? You don't want to say that there's any tall trees underneath this object, right? You probably yes. don't don't want to park your vehicle underneath this object if you have a tall vehicle, right? Because the six feet isn't a lot. The only way I would recommend that is if you carve out some of the grade beneath it. Um, something that is kind of interesting and in just looking at this, um, the pool is actually a really nice feature to potentially have underneath that element because mm -hmm. you're sort of already at grade level, right? And you're about chest height. So if yeah. you look up, you have six feet before you see the bottom top of that object. And there's really no way you can jump out of the water you yeah. know, when, you're, when you're in it to hit your head on that. So um, you could play off that object as being sort of a relationship between maybe a pool and that object or you can lower the grade in that area by creating a, a wall, right? You could, put a, you could put a retaining wall right here. And you could also put a retaining wall like around it, you know, and then you could have a lower grade right there, right? And then once you clear it, you could have steps that lead you back up to the, the existing grade level, right? So you do have the availability of changing the grade here. It's not what it is is what it is. Mm -hmm. If you want to carve down or build up, you can, you can do that. Uh, another question, like where that pavilion is, obviously yes. that structure will have some, would have some height and it is yeah. like right where a tree is. So is there like a height limit? Um, for that that, thing? That's, that's that a like... great, that's a great question. So yeah, there is a tree right there. Um, essentially in this design proposal, that pavilion would have to um, probably be relocated around mm -hmm. that tree. So that way it doesn't hit that tree, right? Um, or the pavilion would have to incorporate that tree as part of the design. Um, the pavilion itself is really just supposed to be a program space. It's not necessarily a building. Um, so I think in this example here, they ended up turning the pavilion into just like a, um, mm -hmm. like, a, like, a like a stage, mm -hmm. right? Um, and when this assignment was handed out then, that tree didn't exist on this assignment. And so that's why you don't see it here or here. Like you don't see it anywhere um, mm -hmm. because that, that tree didn't exist before I added okay. that tree, tree recently. Um, but there are these trees that are right here. So 
um, yeah, you just have to kind of keep that stuff in mind. Um, I don't recommend building any real, like, let's say structures around the site, right? Like if you say that there's a storage area, you're not going to really design it. It's going to just be sort of a box that lives on the site plan, right? You're not going to design some elaborate like gazebo or something on here. So if I wanted to put a shop in, then it would just be like a square. Yeah, it would just be a, sh a square and you would just show it as like a, a storage space or like something like that. You wouldn't really design it by any, by any means. So yeah, but if you want a space like that, like a storage space or a shop space, right, you can propose that as part of this and just make sure that you have access to it and steps mm -hmm. if you need it and those kinds of things. And make sure that um, it's clearing any kind of trees or other existing items that are on, on the site plan. All right. Thank you. Cool. Is that everything? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, have a All good right. night. I appreciate yeah, take it. Care. Take care. Bye.